Yep, thank you. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to the second session. And um, the next speaker is uh, Michael from Previous Next. Um, he's a senior developer at Previous Next, and he's going to talk about uh, X debug. And if you, after the session for the roundtable uh, discussions, if you want to be part of the discussion or come on the screen, please just raise your hand. Um, and then we will uh, we will um, uh, we'll make you part of the discussion on the screen. Um, over to you, Michael. Thanks for that. Um, as he mentioned, I'm going to be talking about xDebug. Uh, for this session, uh, we're going to be using PHP Storm and DDEV. You can use any local environment you'd like. Uh, you can use Lando or you can use VS Code or anything like that. Uh, and we're also just going to be debugging this basic Drupal site that uh, uses the migrate module to pull in homebrew recipes from a JSON feed. So to get started, we're going to talk about some debugging concepts. And then we're going to go through some practical examples and some uh, configuration uh, at, at the end. So the first um, the concept that I want to talk about is breakpoints. So perhaps if you haven't used xDebug before, maybe you have done something like this, um, where you want to see the value of a variable. So you put in a var dump and then load up the page in your browser and then um, realize, hang on, that's not the variable I want. And you rinse and repeat until you finally get the right information that you're looking for. And that's not what I'm talking about with breakpoints. Um, and perhaps you've you know, put in a Drupal add message into um, an if statement or a loop or something like that to try and see uh, if your code's actually being run. Um, and again, that's not what I'm talking about here. Uh, I know to some of you, XD bug will be second nature. So hopefully uh, there's something for you to learn as well. Um, so I'm going to jump right into PHP Storm here and show you uh, how to set a breakpoint. So essentially, this is um, this is massaging the JSON feed before we actually process it in Migrate API. So what I want to do is just stick um, click in the left column here. It's going to put a nice red circle, and that's going to indicate there's a breakpoint there. Uh, then we have to make sure that we're listening for xDebug connections and then simply uh, load up this page in the browser, and xDebug is going to trigger straight away. Um, so what we can see here is this is the stack trace of everything that's come before where we are now. Uh, and this section here shows the current variables that are in scope. So we've got the URL, which is passed into this function. We've got the current object, this, and all of these super globals as well. OK, so uh, once we've reached our breakpoint, we can begin doing our step debugging. So basically, we've got these buttons across here where I can hit step over, which is just going to evaluate the current line of code. Uh, and then I'll be able to see um, the new variables that are available. So response, which came from line 31 there. Um, and we can continue hitting step over and inspecting you know, what's changed. Uh, finally, when we come to a function call where we actually want to jump into it and see what's happening inside that function, we can hit step into, and that's going to jump us down to that piece of code. It could be in another file or in the same file, and that's going to get added to the stack trace here. Um, so then this is a for each loop. So if we just keep stepping over and doing our debugging, you know, having a look at what's changing. Um, and we realize, OK, we no longer want to be in this loop. It's actually going to iterate, I think, 50 times here. We don't want to just keep clicking through it. So we can then hit step out. And that's going to return us back to where we came from. And then finally, uh, once we've finished, we just want to let the page keep loading. We'll just hit resume over here. Um, and that's actually going to take us this 
function gets called multiple times on this page. So it's actually going to break again. Or if we had other breakpoints that are reached, it'll break on those. Uh, but if we just want to let the page keep running, we can just uh, mute the breakpoints here and hit resume. Okay, so uh, the next concept is the debugging console. So I'm actually just going to reload this page again. Okay, and it. Um, the debugging console is just on this button here. So if we just skip over this line, um, we can see here's that response object here. We look at this stream. Um, it's actually a resource and we can't really do anything with it. We can't see what it is. So we can jump into the console and we can uh, start typing. We can basically evaluate any PHP expression. So response.get contents and we can have a look at what's in it. So that can be really handy if you think, you know, you want to change some logic in this function and you want to kind of draft it up and uh, see in real time the output that you're going to get from it. Um, and, you know, that can be a lot better than basically typing it straight into here and reloading the page and then going back and forth every time you get it wrong. The next thing I want to talk about is conditional breakpoints. So as I mentioned, this is a data migration. Um, and let's say we just happen to notice that uh, one of the nodes that was imported has some data missing. So in this one here, the uh, mash temperature, there's no value there. So we want to know what's going on. So I'm going to debug the actual migration itself. Um, so I'm just going to grab the get plugin from uh, the migrate module, and I'm going to pop a breakpoint into this um, transform method here, just so we can inspect each of the values that are coming into the migration. So uh, I've got the breakpoint there. I'm going to run. This is the migrate command, um, and it's going to break on the first row of the migration. Um, we can jump into the console again and have a look at say row.get source property. Okay, we can see that it's number one here. We're actually looking for uh, it was number 169 was the problematic one. So basically what we we can you know keep stepping through it and reevaluating this. We're gonna see okay now we're on row two and it's gonna take a long time to keep clicking through until we get to 169. So what we can do is Grab that expression here and right click on the breakpoint and place it in as a condition. So when that is equal to 169, that's when we want to break. So we'll just resume the program and you know here's the migration happening. And that should break once we get to that particular um, ID. So let's have a look at the source. Okay, there we are, beer ID 169. Um, and we can see, okay, the temperature value is null, which is probably the problem here. Okay, so I was actually also going to show you there's a watch column here. So basically, any of these expressions um, can be added to a watch list. So I'm just going to remove the condition on this breakpoint and keep stepping through it. Um, you can see, so the value of it here has changed to number 170. So basically, if you want to keep track of a, va a variable or an expression or anything like that, you can add it as a watch. Um, if I move that breakpoint down towards the return statement, we can keep track of the return value. So it's 68 in this particular row where the ID is 171. Um, you know. And, uh, yeah, kind of do your debugging that way. Okay, so now onto some more debugging scenarios. So um, you've seen debugging the browser. You can also debug uh, Josh commands or PHP unit on the command line. Um, but you do have to make sure that this environment variable is set. Um, I'm going to go over some config stuff a bit later. Um, 
But in DDEV, this is set for you automatically. Uh, the next thing you can do is run your PHP unit tests directly in PHP Storm without having to um, invoke it on the command line. So I've written a blog post to um, show you how to set that up because I'm not going to have time to go all the way through it. And there's an instructional video as well uh, for how you can go from nothing to a full running Drupal site where you can debug um, all sorts of tests in there. So check that out if you have time. Um, but I will just give you a quick demo. So I'm just going to open up the node module because it has a whole bunch of different tests. So if we have a look at this unit tests, we can pop a breakpoint inside a test. And we've got this uh, little icon here that lets me click on it and hit debug. And that will break inside the test. And we can have a look at what's going on. Um, similarly, you can do the same thing for uh, kernel tests, functional tests, functional JavaScript tests. Um, for this site, I'm using Drupal test traits, which you may have seen before. Um, but what's interesting here is you might want to debug the test itself, but you may also want to test the Drupal site that is being run behind the test. So here we can set a breakpoint in the test, but we can also set a breakpoint in the Drupal site. So I'm going to stick it in index.php. Um, and then if I hit debug here, it should break first in my test. OK, here we are. And we're going to step over this, and it's going to try and visit node 1 uh, in the headless Chrome browser. Um, and here we are, it's breaking inside the Drupal site. So we can debug the Drupal site as well as the test. Um, OK, so to get started with xdebug, it's going to depend a lot on what environment you're using. So if you're using ddev, a lot of it sort of works out of the box. Um, and Lando does a fair bit to, in that way as well. Um, so in your Lando, Lando file, you need to add uh, this config xdebug uh, setting. In ddev, you can just enable it on the command line with ddev xdebug on. And if you're building your own Docker images, you'll have to install the extension um, and enable it. And that's probably similar if you're using a local server like MAMP or XAMPP or something similar like that. Um, then there's a few key configuration variables. Uh, just by the way, I'm talking about xdebug3 here. Everything's a bit different in xdebug2, and I'd suggest just jump straight ahead to xdebug3. It's a lot uh, more performant as well and easier to configure. So if we set the xdebug mode to debug, that's going to enable our step debugging. Um, the client host setting uh, resolves the Docker uh, container to your local machine. Um, and the client port uh, is where PHP Storm is going to listen for connections. And finally, this start with, start with requests can be set to either yes or trigger. So if it's yes, um, every single PHP request is going to try and connect back to um, your debugger, PHP Storm or whatever. Uh, or if it's set to trigger, then you need to use a browser extension or an environment variable to basically tell it xdebug you want to start doing debugging. Uh, and that extension is called xdebug helper. So in your IDE, this is PHP Storm. Uh, you need to make sure you've got your port numbers uh, configured the same as you had uh, the extension configured. This is the default out of the box. Uh, again, make sure you're using the latest version of PHP Storm, uh, which supports xdebug3. Uh, and you can click this validate button up here, which um, brings up this dialog where, if everything works correctly, you should get all these green ticks to say that um, xdebug is working. And finally, you need to make sure uh, that xdebug or PHP Storm knows about um, your server. So on 
this on ddev, the absolute path to your code on the server is via www HTML. And that's got a map to where the project is on your local machine. Uh, you don't need to worry about mapping the vendor directory or the web directory, just as long as you've got the whole project uh, mapped out. And the host needs to map, um, needs to match uh, the domain name in your browser. Right, this is the browser extension I was talking about earlier. Um, there's one for Firefox and one for Chrome. Um, otherwise, just use ddev xdebug on, which will use the start with request equals yes uh, setting. And you can just turn it on and off. Um, I'm not going to have time to go through the configuration for these tests, but um, I'll refer back to the blog post. Amjad, if you can paste the link into the chat, that would be great. Um, so yeah, we're running a code sprint tomorrow. Um, debugging is probably going to be pretty helpful. So come along, give it a try, and um, yeah, see what you can contribute tomorrow. Thanks for the presentation, Michael. Um, if anybody wants to share or, you know, um, just general discussions on backend and testing, development and testing, just uh, raise your hand and can bring you to the screen. Or you can even just put question um, or a discussion topic in the, in the live Q&A, which is in the control panel of your screen. Um, I would like to uh, share uh, another thing which we have. Um, basically, uh, you know, the X debug has also another option called startup on error. Um, and that's essentially, you know, you, you just basically, you know, any error, any exception thrown in your PHP code, X debug will stop there. And uh, it's like a breakpoint on every error, which is very helpful when you're mostly doing the, the what do we say, um, console-based applications or, you know, Drush-based imports and stuff like that. Uh, there is one question uh, for you, Michael. How can you add wa watch to a specific variable from Litton? How can you add a watch to a specific variable? That's right. Yeah, okay. So uh, let me just bring that back up. So. Basically, this watches column here, you can hit this new watch and you can basically type in, um, you know, anything that's available. So, uh, or you could, just, like, if I put source data there, it's going to be, there's nothing in it. But if I, let me put a breakpoint in here. Um, The source data is null. If I skip over it, skip over again, there we are. So like that. Um, there's also a setting that may be relevant. Um, some expressions can't be evaluated or can't be watched um, because they could be risky because they can actually change values. Um, but if you know what you're doing and you want to um, add them anyway, there's a setting um, here, safe evaluation mode in value hints and watches frame. Um, and I, I think that may have actually been used um, where I was, it was in the, when I was doing uh, row.get source, something like that. Um, yeah, does that answer the question? Yeah. Um, does anyone here want to share their experience with XDebug or their setup um, in their in their own organization or something? If not, I'll continue the discussion of the. Um, BHEAD versus Drupal testing traits. Um, so, you know, um, in our organization, we've been using BHEAD for a while. And 
um, you know, it was taking almost, you know, um, so many hours to do it. And then we switched to uh, triple trades, testing trades, which saved a lot of time. Um, and, it, you know, those hours now just became minutes. And, you know, um, we can do a functional test, um, all of the kernel tests using those threads, and um, they've been very helpful. Luke, can you explain a little bit what Drupal test traits are? So what, what's the difference between that and a, um, a, and a BHAT test and a, you know, a core functional test? Uh, so there, there are basically, you know, three types of tests we do, right? Functional um, is unit test and kernel test. So Drupal test rates um, kind of we had test is like a functional test, as in you are replacing a person going and clicking a button, right? Um, and the functional test, you know, you you do it under the you know a headless Chrome browser, which is basically essentially computer doing the same thing. You know, your test case is just going and clicking instead of a person. Um, and so we had was, you know, using, uh, you know, another language, which was naturally, you know, like you can write natural expressions and stuff like that. While Drupal test traits um, is, you know, is it, the similar logic, but Drupal test rate is all PHP. You don't have to interpret your things and, you know, you can just write your functional tests naturally with, uh, you know, with use cases and test cases using, using PHP unit framework. Uh, which was why it's more faster than, you know, um, the B head ones. Um, so, you know, uh, I'll show you, I can show you one piece of code which might help um, just to give you and let me just see. Open. Uh, Right. Cool. Uh, can you guys see my screen? See it. Ah. Uh, there we sorry. are. Yeah. Cool. So I'll just um, quickly share my PHP strong. Um, yep. So, um, that's, uh, for example, you know, um, on our site, which is a registered site, where we just basically you know, use this uh, functional test. And it's very clearly saying, you know, just going to the page and clicking. So I'll just show you the, this one. So it's creating a landing page, which is essentially, you know, um, a Drupal node. Um, and then, you know, we're finding an element with, um, you know, with basically, so let me just zoom so people can see. We're going to that URL, uh, you know, finding an element with certain ID, you know, and then if the element exists, you know, we just want to basically add some uh, values to that element and, you know, and uh, it submits the form just like you click on a submit button and then, you know, asserting whether it's, uh, you know, actually, you know, doing the, uh, we actually got the right search term in the URL or not. So this is just a small example, um, but essentially you can you can do you know many things like this you know um, using the Drupal test rates. So I'm just trying to see if I can share a VNC player scenario in there. Meanwhile, meanwhile, I would really appreciate if somebody else also want to probably share their um, their setup, how they do debugging yeah, so, and testing. Yeah, and we don't audience. need to be focusing just on debugging. So if there's any sort of uh, backend uh, tool or process or whatever that you use um, that you want to share, uh, that'll be great. Um, Something that we have been talking about was code quality tools. So things like PHP Stan, um, you know, Coda module, anything like that. If anyone has any of that to share. Is anybody using PHP Stan for their CI CD pipeline or testings? Yeah, <clears throat> we have it enabled on every pull request. Yeah. 
Um, Do you want to run quickly what is PHP Stan, Michael? Just... Yeah, so I guess PHP Stan is a static analysis tool that uh, inspects your codes for potential errors, um, and it can be set to uh, various levels uh, depending on, on how strict you want to be. Um, so it's yeah, it's going to detect, for example, maybe you're passing a the result of a function to another function. Let's say it's like you pass something to an array, but perhaps it might not be an array that's being passed. It's going to, like, if there's a potential that it's not going to be an array, it's going to say, hang on, this this could actually be null, and an array doesn't know how to handle that. Uh, so PHP stand's going to detect that for you. Um, depending on what level you've got it set. We're also using for our CI CD pipelines. Um, um, yeah. So we've got a couple of people. So um, Michael Priest and Bevan talking about. So Michael's using PHP Stan and Code Sniffer in, the, in his CI. Bevan, yes, you do need to add it to your your tooling chain. Um, for Drupal 10, uh, we're going to be requiring Drupal uh, PHP 8 or perhaps even PHP 8.1. And I know there's a process at the moment where um, Garbor is trying to get the upgrade status module to run PHP stand against every contrib module that's out there to detect uh, PHP 8 compatibility issues. So um, yeah, if you need to do a PHP version upgrade, then it's a great tool to use. Another very uh, good tool we found for the uh, for the testing, specifically for kernel testing, is called Prophecy. I'm sure a lot of people would be using it to mock the objects and, you know, it's a great tool as well to, you know, um, test the logic of your classes rather than, you know, the functionality. So, so the, the main difference between functional and kernel would be the functional test takes more time because it's actually your machine going and clicking things and, you know, evaluating results. Sometimes they time out as well, but you know, with kernel test, it's just testing the logic, right? So it's mostly, you know, a very lightweight uh, wrapper around how you're gonna test things, and and you can with prophecy, you can create literally, um, you know, any type of objects um, uh, existing in your system. You can expect output, and then you can basically, uh, you know, uh, test your things. So. Um, I, I just have a question, um, and this is for everyone. Uh, if um, how does the you know how Drupal core does it right? What what's basically Drupal core's way of testing uh, core and contrib modules? Um, we see that you know sometimes when you submit a patch, it says the test failed um, and test. So I've, I've you know vaguely clicked on it and found a Jenkins job, but I was always been interested if somebody want to share. Uh, in the experience. Maybe Michael, have you ever come across? Yeah, I'm just gonna. Uh, can I share my screen again? Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's have a look. So, when a patch is submitted on Drupal.org, so um, it's gonna run the Drupal test bot automatically. Um, it's running. 28,000 tests, which can take, I think it takes about an hour. So, um, Good. yeah, so if we click into the dispatcher, we can actually have a look at what's actually being run. Um, so we've got the, the console output here it shows you, you know, every single test that's been run and basically for a patch to get accepted, every single test has to pass. 
um, and you need to be writing a test for the new piece of functionality or the bug that's being fixed as well. Um, what else can we see? We can see the build artifacts. So from here, um, if you have a look at like, yeah, you can have a look at, um, oh, that's gonna try and download the file. But basically you can, you know, have a look at the error log if there's a problem, any of the artifacts from running the tests you can find in here. Uh, and this runs on contrib modules as well, um, if the project is configured to do it. I've got a question from Morad uh, Farshi about, are you able to show a scenario where we can use Xdebug browser extension? Yeah, sure. So uh, it's a bit tricky because Ddev is configured, um, let me show you. So I'll just close all of this. If I say um, ddev xdebug off and I put a breakpoint just in index.php, to load up the site, nothing's going to happen, right? So if I have um, Xdebug configured in trigger mode, basically I want to click, this, this is the extension here, um, set it to debug instead of disable, uh, and that's going to send a cookie along um, with the request when you reload the page. Um, and that, that would break uh, when you reload the page. But since I don't have Xdebug configured that way in DDEV, I can't show you that live. Um, but yeah, I think if you're using Lando, that's the default configuration is um, to have it in trigger mode. But yeah, let me show you the um, PHP info page for DDEV. So this is all set out of the box in DDEV, but you'll see, um, yeah, so mode is, is actually set to debug, comma, develop. So debug will add uh, some other settings. I'm not sure off the top of my head exactly what it is. But if, you, if you're if you still on Xdebug 2, um, basically you had to set like eight or nine different uh, variables where setting the mode to um debug just does that for you there's a there's a page on the xdebug site that explains the differences so previously you'd have to say you know all of these things which is now xdebug mode is debug um, there's some other things that xdebug can do like it can give you a coverage report of your unit test to tell you you know you've 90 percent coverage or whatever um you'll have to read up on here how to set that up um and you can also do uh, profiling performance profiling with xhprof as well um, but i'm not going to be able to show that to you right now i can even share like i'm using uh, xdebug on my um what do we say on my screen? So I'll just show you my screen. So basically, Xdebug is you know this uh, this extension which Michael was uh, mentioning earlier. So you enable that extension, um, and you know um, when it's green, basically you are in the debug mode right now. So every request it sends, it will basically say you know um, I'm coming from one two seven zero zero one. So that's that's basically my setup right on my local that you know where it's coming from. And you have to get 
the PHP uh, strong, basically IDE uh, key, which you can set up by default. It comes with PHP strong, but you can you can add anything, you know, other IDEs as well. So um, that's on my browser, and on the in a, on the PHP strong side, I just put this, you know, where the request will come, and filter anything with PHP strong IDE key, and and I just started like a remote debug sessions on that. And that's pretty much all you need, right? And then um, I said, okay. Um, and then when you want to start debugging, uh, you just click on the listening thing. And I have put a breakpoint here. Um, and hopefully, um, when it runs, It's a bit slow. I think that's because of the cached thingy. But essentially, when it runs, it would just stop uh, wherever your breakpoint is. Um, so that's how I set up. Like it's it's essentially the thing is you set it up as a remote uh, breakpoint, um, and you know, and then then just enable that browser extension uh, for it to get run. I hope that answers your question. So I might um, actually go through some of the settings that I have for running these unit tests in PHP Storm. So essentially, uh, if I can just have my screen back on, oh, there we go. So essentially, uh, we need to have a CLI, PHP CLI interpreter configured. Um, so you can have just your local um, PHP installation on your machine. For this, um, I'm using DDEV. So that's actually uh, loading in the Docker Compose file that's generated by DDEV um, and connecting to the actual DDEV container uh, to run um, the unit test. Um, let's see. So under the test framework section, I've set it to use so I went um, PHP unit by remote interpreter, and that's where I've chosen my DDEV interpreter, which is here. Um, and you can tell it the path to the autoloader, um, composer's autoloader, and that's going to detect PHP unit, uh, as well as your configuration file. Uh, that's um, the basis for it. Then the other thing um, is your PHP unit XML file. So Essentially, like your simple test base URL is required for the functional tests, um, but it needs to be a URL that's accessible to your local machine for debugging, but also to the um, PHP container. So uh, in DDEV, the um, domain name is um, exposed both in inside the container and outside of the container. So you can just use exactly um, the same that you would use in the browser. A lot of the time, depending on your configuration, you probably just have something like localhost here. Um, same goes for the database. So if you if you see this here, this is MySQL um, inside DDEV. So the host name, is DB, the username and password is DB, and the database itself is DB. Um, I'm actually using SQLite because it runs a bit faster um, for kernel tests and functional tests. Um, for Drupal test traits, it's a bit different because you need a, a real life database. So it actually just uses what you've got configured in settings.php. Um, and so the same thing, so this Chrome here and Chrome driver here, these are other Docker containers that I've got set up in DDEV. Uh, you'll have to refer to my blog post about how to set those up. Um, but that's so that Selenium um, and Chrome driver can talk to the site uh, for running the functional JavaScript tests and the Selenium tests.
but I never thought of SQL Lite before. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I'm not sure if Drupal CI uses it, um, but I've definitely seen um, something on Drupal.org about it. It'd be good to see the um, statistics of how much faster it is, but it's pretty cool. It doesn't work on every single module. So if your module does some strange database manipulation, um, perhaps it's doing it the wrong way. Uh, it might fail in SQLite. Another thing is, you know, I've been using Xdebug for a while, but I've never used Step Over, which you uh, mentioned in your presentation. Yeah, so um, I probably use step over a lot more than I do step into, um, or at least to kind of narrow down. Um, sometimes you don't know exactly where you want to be debugging, so you can kind of skip line by line. Um, yeah. And yeah. I guess sometimes, sometimes you might see one function call, but that turns out to actually invoke like 100 other functions. And if you step into each and every one of those is going to take you forever to get back to the next line. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that's cool. Um, also, uh, we found that when we split up the container, so the container with xdebug is a separate service, and the normal is a separate service that helped a lot. And so somebody. You know, like for example, because because of X debug takes a lot of memory um, for running tests and stuff. Like for example, if you're running a PHP, you need a functional test. You might switch to normal, you know, without X debug container, and then for you know to debug that test, you go back to the debug container and then use it. Yeah, that's right. So in Xdebug 3, it's not so much of an issue having the extension enabled kind of all the time because it's so much faster and more performant than Xdebug 2. Um, but we, we actually run a similar setup. So um, I haven't actually used Ddev until about two weeks ago. But yeah, what we do is we have um, Nginx configured. So if it sees that cookie coming from the browser extension, um, then it passes the request through to the Xdebug container instead of the uh, standard container. Right, interesting. And, then, yeah. and that has um, basically the start with the request set to yes instead of trigger. Xdebug 3, does it have any uh, dependency on which PHP version or it works no. on all? Yeah. Mm -hmm. or, I mean, maybe, maybe going way back to. Yeah, or whatever. But if yeah. you use, I've used it on seven point four, um, probably seven point two. I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, it's been nice, uh, and thanks very much for sharing all the knowledge. Yeah. Um, X debug is, I think, very important uh, utility in your toolbox. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for coming along, and I hope you've learned something. Yeah. Um, if anyone has last question, um, feel free to post it in. So you all let the code sprint tomorrow. It's free. Yep. You don't need a ticket. Don't need don't need to know what you're doing either. We've got mentors <laughs> that'll. <laughs> we got mentors that'll guide us, guide everyone through the process. Sure. And I heard they also guide for how to contribute to Drupal, right? Like creating patch and stuff as well. Yeah, that's right. So essentially there's a bunch of um, tickets that have already been, or issues on Drupal.org that have already been tagged as ones we might like to look at. You can work on any issue you want, um, but yeah, those are the ones that we're going to be focusing on. So if you, if you want help with a particular issue, um, bring it up uh, oh. at the codes for it tomorrow. Yeah, no worries. Anything X debug setup uh, anybody want to bring up tomorrow in the code sprint? Yeah, I'm just going to help you with your setup. <laughs> <laughs> sure, <laughs> I will try. All right. All right. Thanks, awesome. everyone. I think that's a wrap then. Uh, thank you, Michael, and thanks everyone for participating. Cheers.